Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming my September wrap up. So in September I read 13 books and in August I read 13 books. I don't know like why it was the exact same number but great! In the beginning of September I was still on holiday and I didn't read so I like I lost like almost a week of reading, not reading properly and I'm like why but it's fine <laughs> some of these are arcs so there will be full reviews up on them on my channel if they're not already so i won't talk that much about those because t time yes time first book i finished in september was six goodbyes we never said by candace ganger this was an arc I got from NatGalley. I will talk more about it in a full review soonish, but it follows these two characters. One of them who lost her father and the other one who lost both his parents. They meet and sort of feel comfort in each other's pain, but it's like, it's a lot about mental health and stuff, but it also like was written so weirdly, like the plot was all over the place. And I was very confused sometimes because it used a lot of time getting to even meet each other and when they did it's sort of like they I don't know their whole relationship was kind of weird not weird but like they weirdly explained and their interactions was really weird so I generally just I didn't like it I thought I would like it a lot I like the mental health aspects of it and that is an own voices mental health story with like PTSD and depression etc but like the whole story how it was executed didn't work for me at all so I gave it like two out of five stars but I need to collect my thoughts more I'm gonna post a full review on my channel at some point soon. The next book I finished was A Boy and His Dog at the End of the World. It has such a long title, I almost forget. By C.A. Fletcher. This one I actually thought I got an arc off from that galley in like January or something, I don't know. It was released in April and I actually just got a sampler and I don't like samplers so I didn't read it. But then I just got an audiobook. I started it in August and I finished it in September and I really really enjoyed the book actually. The audiobook is also read by the author so that was really nice but it follows Grace whose dog gets stolen and him and his other dog goes after this man who steals his dog and they really just go through the world because in this world it's after the apocalypse because the world is filled with not that many people, barely any people at all because people stopped having kids and like so his family has lived on this tiny island in like the UK somewhere for like his whole life and he goes to the mainland and he's never like been there before and he just sees the leftovers of our world there's a lot of reflections comparing like what he read in books of our world to what he sees and he's like you live in these big cities that's so weird there's also like a lot of kind of foreshadowing in the book like he finds a book in the book and then it's like, this book will save my life later, and then it does. It became a lot of foreshadowing after a while, so I got a bit tired of it, because he writes to us, kinda, while the things are happening, and then he goes back saying what happened, kinda. It's still gives a really interesting story and reflections upon our world, and just like seeing the world through his eyes, going on this big journey. And then there were some really big twists in the end that I did not expect. The ending was very interesting. And I really, really enjoyed it. Like, overall, the whole journey thing was really interesting. I enjoyed Grace as a character. I enjoyed their love for dogs and everything. So, you know, it was an enjoyable story. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. And I would recommend it if you like post apocalyptic stories with heart. I then read Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chabocki. This one I have a full review up on my channel, so I recommend watching that and I will leave the link down below. But this one is Stephen Chabocki's news release, which was released on the 1st of October, and it follows Christopher and his mother moving to this small town after running away, kinda, in the middle of the night. And then Christopher disappears into the woods for six days and comes out much smarter and different and he gets obsessed with building this tree house and we don't know why but things are going on there is mystery and it's a horror thriller novel so there's this horror thriller scenes and there's like dark shit going on 
yeah, the whole book goes kind of crazy after a while and I could really really imagine it as a TV show. But really the best part of the book was the characters and how much you cheer for them and feel for them and want them all to be okay. The book does take really surprising turns though and I did not expect the book to be what it was about. After I finished it I was like this was what the book was about and it's very strange but not necessarily bad. I was just surprised of what the book was about. But yeah, I I, I I talk more about this in my full review, so we can just move on. <laughs> I done read Julia Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. I actually got an arc from this, but it had also been released previously in 2016, so I decided to listen to the audiobook. And I also have a full review of this up on my channel, so I will leave a link down below. But this one follows Juliet, who gets this internship with this author that she really, really looks up to, that wrote this feminist book about the vagina and just like your body and how you should be free. Juliet is Latino and also a lesbian. She comes out to her family. They do not take it that well she thinks and then she leaves right after and she just goes into this world of LGBT plus community and is very overwhelmed and don't know all the words but she learns and grows and it's just following her through the summer discovering new things and yeah I love Juliet as a character I love the approach to racism and white privilege and I just love all her thoughts and her thought patterns and generally just you know her character and what she realizes about herself and about the world so yeah I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four out of five stars and again more thoughts in my full review. I just realized when I talked about imaginary friend I forgot to take out the arc from my bookshelf and hold it up while talking about it but here it is! <laughs> wow! I also read Cryos War by Nina Rivella, which is also an arc, and this time I remember taking it out of my bookshelf. I don't know why I forgot, it was weird. This one was also released on the 1st of October, and I have a full review up on my channel, so go and check it out. This one is set in a world in the future where Ultimane has taken over and is ruling over the humans. We follow Cryer, who is the son of the Ottoman king and she realizes she has a flaw in her design. The Ottoman is made out of four main components and she finds out she has a fifth one which is passion and she's like oh shit there's something wrong with me are they gonna kill me now? <laughs> she also is soon to be betrothed and married to this dude that I now can't remember the name of but he is the leader of this organization which is really against humans and they want to kill all the humans and make new cities because they live in humans old cities where humans are not able to live so yeah there's things going on with her and we also follow Isla who is a human and her family was killed because of the current king and she wants to kill his daughter, Cryer, to take revenge so that he could feel the pain she felt. And they meet, she is Cryer's new handmaiden and she also works with the rebellion so she decides to spy on her and find out more information about things before killing her. And it's an effort of romance. We follow these two characters realizing things in the world around them, like Cryer realizing that she quite enjoy humans and don't understand why we should get rid of them and also we follow Isla who realizes that Cryer is not as bad and not all domains are bad as she believes. So yeah we have these sweet moments between them, we get this world building of the ultimates and how they were made and different things in their, these guys' pasts and you know plot twists and other turns. It's just the first one in a trilogy I believe. So so it was fun, even though I feel like things could have been a bit more explored. But I gave it 3.75 out of 5 stars, 3.5, I don't exactly remember. And I did enjoy it a lot and I'm excited for more. So check out my review for more thoughts. So the next three books I feel like I should just talk about together. But I read Sword of Destiny, Blood of Elves and Time of Contempt, all by... Andrzej Sapkowski, which I cannot pronounce because it's Polish. Sort of Destiny and Blood of Elves, I finished right after one another, but Time of Content was actually my last book for the whole month. So it's not in order like I like it to be, but I feel like I can't really talk about Time of Content anyway because spoilers. But yeah, Sword of Destiny is 0 0.75 number book in the Witches series or something. And 
Bold of Alice is the official book number one in the Witcher series and Time of Content is the official book number two in the series. But really book four and Blood of Elf is really book three. It depends what you count as like in the book series officially. On Goodreads they have said non one and two and the others are like 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, something like that. In the order things are happening in the series, it's in that order you should read them. That made no sense whatsoever. And I listened to the audiobook for all three of these in like one month. I play Minecraft while listening to it. It's perfect game to listen to audiobook. I listen to so much audiobook just because of Minecraft. Bless Minecraft. And yeah, it follows The Witcher, obviously. Geralt, who goes around trying to find missions because a witcher kills magical things that, you know, bothers humans for money. That's what they live off. And we also are introduced to other characters. Not necessarily in this one because it's one before that I read last year, The Last Wish. But like the other characters here that are important is, for example, Yennefer, who is Geralt's, I was gonna say love, I guess she is, who is a sorcerer, and a very, very other important character named Ciri, who is the daughter of one of the queens in one of the lands and that land does get destroyed so she and Gareth Dasney is very connected and he is supposed to protect her kinda it's kinda confusing actually but it does make sense when you read them but yeah we follow like when the series really starts because the books before kinda like just builds up to it and there's like more short stories than like a full story but when the story starts in both of us but you should read the ones before to get all the context. It's like a war brewing and yeah, the different characters are doing different things. I don't know how to talk about this apparently. It's It was very hard, but overall it falls Gerard to Witcher, who I love so much and I'm so excited for the TV series, which is why I decided to read all of these now so that I am prepared. I am just generally a bit confused about the world because there's so many places and characters sometimes. And I want like a map. I don't remember if it was in the physical copies that I have at home in Norway, so that doesn't help me at all. But I generally enjoy the world and the characters and how it's written and I, I, I like everything, okay? I'm just a bit confused sometimes, but because there's a lot of conversations about like people doing different things. There's like lots of people talking about other people doing things and I'm like, I don't know who all these people are, but I feel like if I read it physically, I could go back and check. But I really, really do enjoy the other book because he reads it really well but at the same time sometimes I'm confused but I'm a kind of stupid person so it's my fault but yeah again overall enjoyed all three books a lot I think I gave them all like four out of five stars someone maybe be like 3.75 but let's not be too specific here so yeah that was three of the books I read at once. I don't really have that much more to say, I think. Maybe when I finish all of them, I can make like a full series review, but that has never happened before. So it probably won't happen because I suck. Other than that, I read Looking for Alaska by John Green. I actually listened to this on audiobook as well. Why play Minecraft? Yay for Minecraft. And I reread this because the series is coming soon. I don't remember when. And it's one of my... It was, it is, I don't know, one of my favorite books of all time. I don't know if it is anymore. I'm like, I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> and I had never listened to the audiobooks. I was like, I will listen to it um, so I can reread it. And I, 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 I don't know what I think about the story anymore. But it follows Miles who goes to this boarding school to find his grade perhaps. His dad used to go to that boarding school. John Queen, the author, used to go to that boarding school. So it's inspired a lot about his life kinda and the main character is really interested in last words and memorizes them and he meets this girl Alaska which he falls completely head over heels for and things happen I don't know it's kind of a spoiler I guess but the first time I read this I was a teenager a tiny teenager and I really was like oh my god it's so nice and all the quotes and it was just really clever and I really enjoyed it and I still think it's very important and has a lot of nice points in it like about loss and dealing with grief and also just like getting friends and other fun things like pranks and stuff but overall I just feel like some things were a bit like strange but like I always enjoyed John Green Strange so it's not like I didn't like it but 
feel like I would give it 4 stars or 4.5 stars instead of 5 stars as I did for the first time I read it. So I think I enjoyed it a bit more then, but I was younger then, but I also still, I love it. Wow, that made no sense whatsoever. I'm losing it completely. I love the characters, they seemed raw and real and just, they're brilliant and I love it. I love that they're all clever kids. Clever kids, awesome. I think that's all I'm gonna say. Let's go to the next one. I will remember to take the book out of my shelf, but the next book I read was Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia. And I have a full review of this up on my channel, so I will leave link that down below. This one is the newest in Wick Riders Percent, being released on the 15th of October. So I don't know if it was released there. This one follows Tristan, who lost his best friend pretty recently, so he's had a pretty rough time. Then he lost his first boxing match, which disappointed his parents so he's sent with his grandparents to their farm in Alabama and then this mythical creature thing a doll a talking doll comes and steals his past best friend notebook which has also been glowing lately and he goes after this baby doll and he then goes into the forest and by accidentally punches this kind of holy tree and he makes a hole in the sky and they fall into this magical world and in this magical world they are sort of in crisis because these metallic creatures has been attacking them and kidnapping people for the past year and they are well in crisis and he meets African American folk heroes and the rest African gods and it's based upon all this just like other Rick Riordan presents books are based upon different mythology and gods etc and we learn more about it and it needs to go on a quest to close this hole in the sky basically. That was a that was a long synopsis. Tristan is just the sweetest character. He's funny and scared of heights and he's not scared to admit it. He has the funniest reactions. He meets these animal people and he just stands there screaming because he's like what the fuck they are talking. It's hilarious. I I loved him. I loved his world. I loved the characters. It was just so much fun. It was exactly what I expected it to be and I just yeah I I had just the greatest, sweetest time with this and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars and I recommend it a lot and again check out my full review for more thoughts. Then I read Rayward Sun by Rebel Ravel. It was my most anticipated release this year. I read it on audiobook and it's the sequel to Carry On which came out in 2015. So it's a while ago that we got this sequel and you know it f continues the story. Um, carry on. So Carry On is about Simon Snow who is the chosen one but he's the worst chosen one ever because he can't control his powers and he's supposed to fight this biggest threat through the magician world. It's kind of like Harry Potter but it really grows out his own thing but Simon Snow shares the room with Bass and Bass and Simon hate each other, they are enemies but Bass is in love with Simon and that's how the story evolves from there. So that's what the first book is about and the second book I don't want to talk that much about but I was as I said, very excited for this. I loved it because I love the world and I love the characters so, so, so much. I was disappointed in it by the fact that I was very shocked to find out that it was a middle book, so I expected answers and more of a concluding story, but it was not since it has now been released. That it's actually a trilogy, but not knowing this while reading this just put me off a lot. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the story a lot. It was just very shocking and like very like you feel like you're, you're reading a story and expecting it to wrap up and then it didn't and you weren't aware of this beforehand really put me off. But I generally just the humor, the writing, the characters are still so the same from Carry On and I just I loved reading about them or listening to them from the amazing narrator and I, I generally loved it. So I gave it 5 out of 5 stars even though I was disappointed in parts because the confusion and like the like the ending just being like what it was. But that doesn't mean I didn't love it. So overall, it did disappoint a bit. I also know now that it will be more, so I can't really be mad about that. But yeah, it's really about, you know, the chosen one after the big last battle, seeing how we deal with it after instead of just, oh, happy ending, done, we get the story after, and I really like the approach to all that. So I, it was interesting. I then read Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abatelli, which is kind of, not the sequel, but the spin-off to Simon vs. the Hopian's Agenda, 
Leah is Sam's best friend who is in Simon vs. the book so she is the main character here and she is also bi and plus sized and she we really just follow her in the last year of high school just I don't know Leah Leah's Leah's character is very funny because she is very rude kinda and mean and she cynical she doesn't feel like sugar sugarcoating things but when she's sweet she is sweet and I really like reading about a different kind of main character who is not nice and sweet to everyone but like has harsh sides because it really does it takes people like that in real life too that doesn't necessarily smile and be happy and nice to everyone even though niceness is important Leah is never mean she's just I would say sarcastic and I really enjoyed reading her and she was very funny. Relationships in this took a really surprising turn because I didn't actually know who Leah was gonna have a thing with because it's an Afro romance here. I feel like we should have gotten more with them but that's fine. There's also this hurtful scene sort of Leah cancelling someone else's sexuality which I didn't appreciate but other than that it is a very sweet and nice contemporary read. Contemporaries generally feel like I don't have that much plot, it's more about the characters and them um, finding and realizing themselves and I generally like more plot stories because I love a really good plot but it's a very character driven story and I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it like 3.5 out of 5 stars and if you like the other Becky Abbottabide books I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. They always read so quick and fast and that was one of the reasons I picked it up because I wanted to read something as fast as possible each day so I could play Minecraft. So the last book I'm gonna talk about in this video is The Gone Rare Deception by Kirsten White. This is the first book in the Camelot Rising trilogy and it's out on the 5th of November. I will have my review up very soon if it's not already up so I will talk more about it then. Person White wanted to write about Gwenevere from the Arthurian legends instead of Arthur which we always hear about and she really takes a twist and turn on this and Gwenevere is not really Gwenevere but she's there to protect Arthur against this magical threat and we get to see Camelot after a war and Arthur finally being king and like him building up his kingdom and just all that and I really enjoy that to see the kingdom being built and to see the politics and all that and I love the characters Arthur and his different sides and reflections we got from him just not that we follow his perspective but like from our point of view and the thoughts and reflections about him and Mordred and Gwenoir and Lancelot who here is a woman which I really really liked Overall, very very great story, perfect for fans of Merlin like me and of the Arthurian legends and I'm so excited for more, again more thoughts in my review but yeah, I gave it 4 out of 5 stars and enjoyed it a lot. That is all the books I read in September. Wrap-ups are always so overwhelming. I'm just like, what did I just say? I have no idea actually. But yeah, I think that covers it because I talked about all the books. I hope you enjoyed and you will see me soon in a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!